Episode number 35, what to do when your spouse is upset. Hello and welcome to the Fighting for Connection podcast. I'm Brett Nicola, a husband, father, and fun lover. Listen in as I share stories, tips, and inspiration that will move you toward the connection that you want in your relationship. All right, hello to all of you. Today, the day that I'm recording this podcast is an exciting day. I woke up at 5.08 sharp and uh, I headed to the golf course and I enjoyed a beautiful morning of golf. And and on hole eight, I received a call. Uh, I missed the call, actually. And then I saw a text from my wife, Kelsey, and she says, where are the van keys? And uh, I call her back and I, well, I check my pocket and sure enough, the one set of van keys that we have uh, are there in my pocket. And so I call her back and I say, uh, I got the van keys and she hangs up on me and uh, <laughs> she was not impressed. She had gotten the kids up and ready for school and she was going to bring them into the school. We drop off our kids every morning, typically. And uh, she wasn't going to be able to bring him to school. So uh, the good news, I guess, in all of that is I didn't let it fluster my game. And I finished off the nine holes I was scheduled to play with my buddy uh, shooting a couple pars. So uh, under pressure, I came through in the clutch and uh, finished off (laughs) my game and headed home to go and bring the kids to school. And since we teed off at at 6 a.m., uh, the kids are supposed to be at school at like 7.45, and I uh, got them there only 20 minutes late. So all in all, I can't complain with a morning like that. And then after I record this podcast, I have five clients lined up back to back to back to back to back. I think that's five. And then uh, I'm going to run home and uh, finish doing whatever we need to do to jump in the van and uh, head west. So We are planning to head out today on a little road trip through South Dakota. We're going to visit Mount Rushmore, and then we're going to head southwest down to Utah uh, before heading north up to Whitefish, Kalispell area in Montana, and then heading back home next Sunday, so nine days from today. Uh, And the kids are super excited. They've been kind of ramping up here as we get into, uh, get closer to the date here. And I'm looking forward to hanging out with the family, seeing the sights along the way and visiting with a whole bunch of longtime friends that are going to be kind of scattered throughout this, uh, the next nine days here. We're planning to meet up with a whole bunch of them. Actually, Justin and Megan were on this podcast a few episodes ago now, uh, and we're going, we're planning on hanging out with them on, on Memorial Day. So uh, looking forward to that for sure. Uh, but today's podcast needs to be done first. So let's get to it. The topic of today, funny enough, is on what to do when your spouse is upset. And this morning, as I headed to the golf course, I knew I had to do this podcast and I was not sure what I was going to do it on. And I figured, you know, a few holes of golf would give me inspiration. Little did I know it was going to be a phone call on hole eight that actually gave me the inspiration that I needed for this podcast. So Kelsey is a gem. Uh, she handled it in stride. I think she was a little frustrated that she got up and I uh, got in a rush to get the kids ready for school while I was out golfing. And, uh, and it was kind of to know, uh, uh, no avail or, or it didn't, uh, wasn't needed to be done. So, uh, but she was smiling when I got home and, and that's the kind of trooper that she is. But, uh, it did give me some thoughts about, you know, this kind of a situation because, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's not a ton of you guys out there. I'm, I'm guessing I'm one of the few, and maybe there's one or two others that are listening here that have found themselves in a similar predicament, right? 
No, I joke because, of course, it's pretty common uh, that we might have this kind of a situation where we look at our spouse and we find them looking back at us with hurt or anger or frustration or annoyance or sadness or something like that. And it's not a fun thing for either party, right? It's it's uh, not a fun feeling to experience when you see your spouse, uh, you know, showing some emotion towards you and I know because I've also been in that position. It's not fun to be the spouse either that is annoyed or upset or frustrated seemingly at their spouse or my spouse in this case. So what do we do with this? Well, many couples, when this happens, they find themselves in the conflict cycle. Now, that's something I've talked a ton about here on this podcast. So if you don't know what the conflict cycle is, uh, check out some of my other podcasts on it or Google EFT conflict cycle and you'll find uh, the diagram of of what I'm talking about. And you might even find a few of my videos on YouTube kind of uh, describing it or explaining it. So um, check that out. But oftentimes, oftentimes couples will, uh, you know, there'll be something that happens that annoys or frustrates or, or hurts one spouse. And as they share it with their other spouse, their, you know, with, with their spouse. So hopefully I'm not confusing you too much, but say a, a husband is upset, annoyed, frustrated, and they share that upset annoyance or frustration with their wife. Um, the wife has a hard time with this, right? They end up kind of dysregulating and spinning out of control and uh, maybe shutting down or withdrawing or attacking or uh, getting upset in in return. And this uh, upset feeling kind of goes back and forth and we're looking for the, our, our spouse to help us feel better, but they're not really in a position to do that. So uh, we get stuck and we kind of spin out of control and we go back and forth and we experience a good old fashioned conflict cycle. So this happens because, you know, their spouse is upset with them and either they feel that their spouse shouldn't be upset with them or they feel like maybe they dropped the ball. And so they, you know, like I said, defend, attack or shut down. And for me personally, on a good day, my wife, Kelsey might show some annoyance with me, but, uh, it's especially hard when she is so upset that she's crying. She shows a lot of her, her frustration or anger. Maybe if she's feeling that through tears and through sadness, and that's kind of the safe emotion for her to share, but it's, it's, uh, (laughs) it's an emotion that kind of eats me up. So, um, so I would rather her like yell at me and she really never has. She always just, uh, either kind of looks at me a a certain way. I call it, I I call it big eyeball. She gives me big eyeballs or she's crying. And, uh, both of them, uh, create this kind of tendency within me to feel like I let her down. And so, Oftentimes what I see myself doing is I get defensive or exasperated and it's because I want so bad for her to be happy with me. You know, one time I had gotten home from work or something and Kelsey had just kind of mentioned to me that, man, it'd be, uh, I'd like, I'd like to have our, our house painted a different color and, uh, me being as sensitive as I am and especially, as sensitive as I was back then when this took place, I, I really took this personally and I reacted from frustration. And she just kind of had mentioned, you know, we were sitting down maybe having coffee or something like that. And she's like, that'd be fun to have the house painted, whatever color it was. Um, and uh, and I just kind of went off on her and I started listening off like all these, you know, quote unquote things that she wanted me to do and uh very exasperated, very frustrated. And I remember her just kind of watching me with like this puzzled expression on her face. And, um, somehow, you know, it's so long ago that I don't remember exactly what took place, but we worked our way through it. And, uh, what I realized after it was all said and done is that she wasn't even putting this on me. She was just kind of simply sharing her vision, her dreams, complaining a little bit, nothing out of the ordinary. Right. But, what I want you to see is like when she was just sharing her dreams, her vision, uh, maybe even complaining a little bit, this created the sense within me that she was upset. 
And uh, so I took it on myself and I got into the cycle, right? I felt like she was disappointed in me. I thought that she wasn't happy with all the efforts that I was doing. And so I went to work to care for myself and I forgot to care for her, right? That's what happens when we get into the cycle is we forget to care for our spouse because we're just so busy trying to take care of ourselves. And it's an important thing to notice because if we want to have uh, a different outcome, we have to become aware of our good old-fashioned automatic responses that just take place every time your spouse is upset, right? Uh, The way your relationship is going is really coming from a, a primary automatic response that you have to whatever stimulus is in front of you. And if you want to have a different outcome, we have to stop doing the primary response, right? And uh, and so to stop doing that primary response, we have to slow down and we have to catch ourselves and we have to recognize like, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm just getting lost and I'm, and I'm getting really uh, focused on taking care of myself and I'm forgetting to take care of my spouse. So, uh, by bypassing our primary response, we look to regulate ourselves. And um, and the way we can regulate ourselves is by seeing that our spouse is looking for care uh, and that we personally are overly sensitive to their emotions. And once we can see that, we can more easily drop into a secondary response of curiosity. The question of what is this emotion really about is a great question to always keep in your thought process as you go through this. This is gonna help you see beyond your first blush response. Now, your spouse might want to, uh, might not wanna talk, or they might call you names, or they might even tell you like you're an awful human or worse. And I want us just to hold on to this question that um, what is this emotion really about? And I think underneath all of those kind of more vile or aggressive or emotional things, there's a small, vulnerable voice that's saying, care for me. I'm worried that you don't care. I'm scared that I'm not seen or I'm not heard. And I'm I'm not sure what that means for us and our relationship, right? All of those things tend to be underneath so many of those other things that I get you. They're confusing, right? It'd be nice if our spouse could just say those things. But if we want to have a better relationship, I'm putting that responsibility on you to figure out. Now, I want you to assess here at this point if you care or if you don't. And if you're listening to this podcast, I'm sure that you care. And if you do care for your spouse, even though they're saying that you don't care, It's good news. I'm glad that you care and I want you to remain caring and to show them that you care. So if you do care, then you can simply allow them to have their emotions and care for them. In my work with couples, I really like examples of how parents show up with their kids because I think it can help us see what is possible. And I want you to imagine like a, a little baby that's upset, right? And the mom is rocking this baby and, and the baby's crying and mama's saying, it's okay, I got you. It's going to be all right, little boy. I see you're upset. It's okay, mama's here, right? I think we can all picture something like this happening. And it's just showing how, you know, what is actually possible here when someone is dysregulated. We can just remain in this very caring space. And it really is a picture of what we can do when we see someone as upset, uh, and, and it's important that we can audit our care. We can kind of self-assess if we care. And, you know, if we care and we've made some mistakes, we can own those mistakes and we can apologize and we can even see and share with them how we see we might have caused some harm, intentional or not. Then we can assure them and we can hold space. Now, this might not work. Our partner might be so dis- dysregulated that they don't calm down right away. And that's okay. Our spouse doesn't have to be happy for us. I want you to think about that. Our spouse doesn't have to be happy for us. They, just like you and me, get to feel and express emotion. And we can allow and hold space. I can't say this enough that we can reassure them, right? We can always just stay in this reassuring place. 
but watch yourself if you're trying to make them be happy so that you don't have to feel discomfort, right? That's what oftentimes we're trying to do. We're like trying to force them to be happy so we don't have to feel this discomfort that's coming up in us, that they're unhappy with us or they're disappointed in us or or, uh, maybe their unhappiness is making a cloud in our day, right? All of this is like the discomfort that we feel that we then try to like force them to be happy so we can have a good day or so we don't have to feel discomfort. But remember, this isn't about you. You can manage your emotions and you can let them express theirs and they might need some time. They might need some space. And the best thing you can do is not spiral out of control, trying to make them happy for you, but you can just stand by and let them know that you're ready to care whenever they are ready to receive and that you still care about them. You still want to help them. You still want, you know, to Uh, help them through this and you still want to be on the other side of this with them, right? Something that we talk about often, just reassuring, like, I'm not sure what happened here, but I want you to know that I care and I want you to know that I want to figure this out with you. I want to get to the other side of this connected and together. Can do so much. You can't read their mind and it's not your responsibility to do so. The responsibility is I was on them to take care of themselves and to express what they want or they need, but you can create space for them and you can remain curious and you can open up uh, the possibility for them to really share what's happening for them. And in this way, you are on your way to creating a more secure and connected bond in your marriage. And you will see in some of these uh you know, if you're able to do this, you're going to see how it impacts and allows for you to move closer together in your relationship. When you can allow your partner to have emotion and you can just uh, not dysregulate, but stand uh, by, hold space, care for them and reassure them. I want you to try these things out because they take practice and they take intention, but I know that we all can do more to stay clean in our thinking, and to not get caught into other people's emotions. When we can do this, we can care for each other way more, and we can be so much more efficient and productive in our care for them. Uh, you're also, you'll also see that you will cultivate and maintain new and deeper connections um, within your relationship, which science shows, by the way, that it decreases mental illness and it leads to a more fulfilled and enjoyable life. And so if that's something that is important to you, I think these things are worth trying out in your relationships. And if you do really struggle to do this and you see yourself reacting in really big ways to other people's emotions, this is a sign that there is something here that you need to get curious about, right? I would say like, this is your workshop, right? Uh, You can lean into this and learn what's going on for you. And if you can't figure it out, it's time to reach out and get support in this so you don't get lost when your spouse or a friend is calling out to you, asking for help and reassurance. We all can do our part to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others. It's a beautiful thing, my friends. Now, I want you today to have a wonderful Memorial Day Take some time to pause and consider uh, the soberness, the the uh, feelings, and, and the thoughts that are surrounded and and embedded into this Memorial Day holiday, and uh, have an enjoyable day. Uh, have a great week, everybody, and I will see you next week on the same podcast. Bye bye. This has been the Fighting for Connection podcast. If you've enjoyed this podcast and want more content like this, check out my Connected Couples Campus, which can be found on my website, www.pivotalapproach.com, and become the difference you need in your relationship.